Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to another episode of the Crispy Compact Communique, the weird 2021 version of the Crispy Noodle podcast. This is 2021, the year of our Lord. Everything <laughs> doesn't make sense. Now on top of everything, uh, a, pande- a pandemic, my laptop broken. Now we're in the middle of a nor'easter that has hit, crippled our area with m- major amounts of snow. So it's, it, you know what, at this rate, I'm ready for anything. Bring on the locusts, bring on the, the I don't know. Uh, we, ha- we had locusts in 2020, didn't we? I'm sure at some point we did. Uh, uh, nothing surprises me at this point. I'm, I'm pretty sure that we did, but we could always have more. There's always yeah. room for more. So it really, the, the the saga has been every week has been something, I you know, something we've all had to deal with. Yeah. And just add another one to the deck because yeah, we had the Philadelphia area got hit with massive amount of snow, um, a lot of shoveling we had to do, but in the end of it all, we made it through okay. Uh, only lost power once, and luckily only for a little bit of time. So good. Thank- Thankfully, we can still give you an, another episode of the podcast that you know and love. Um, but wow, man, every week, it's, it literally has been something new and quirky that I, you know what, go ahead, universe, keep th- throwing curveballs after curveballs, because we are still here giving you a fresh episode of sports entertainment and odd news. But before we get to all of those topics, Mike, how are you doing, good sir? I'm pretty good. Weathering the the storm, all right. You know, just uh, I'm lucky that I can work from home, so I'm just staying inside, staying warm. Um, my girlfriend has been re not rewatching. She's been watching for the first time Community, mm-hmm. and I'm I guess rewatching because as you know, she's watching and I'm catching up an episode here or there, and man. I, it's one of my, I think it's one, probably one of my favorite comedies. Is it on uh, Peacock? No, it's on um, Netflix. Oh, I, I'm surprised yeah, which I is, didn't trans, transition over. Yeah, I'm surprised it didn't transition over either. But yeah, it's still available on Netflix if people want to watch Community either for the first time or rewatch it like I sort of kind of am. Um, I still say to this day that no other show does a genre spoof as good as community did i mean uh, you've watched this, the yeah. show right yeah mm-hmm. i mean you have like the, the episodes that are styled after like you know war documentaries and law and order and you have you know the big paintball episodes which are all themed after you know particular like the action genre they have a western genre one they just do such a good job with it um so that's what i've been doing i've been working from home you know watching community in the background um just playing video games staying warm that's basically it. Same old, same old. How about you, Rich? What have you been up to recently? Um, so I guess <laughs> my thing that I'm going to mention, um, I, sometimes we talk about this in entertainment. Sometimes we talk about it in sports, but I'm going to lead right off with it for, for the introduction portion of the show. Uh, the Royal Rumble was this past Sunday. Um, Mike, I know you're familiar with the Royal Rumble. You love that event where they have 30 different wrestlers and they shove them all yep. into a ring and whoever I, comes. I out. liked playing it. I liked playing it on a what was it PlayStation Three back in the day? Or was it PlayStation Four? I can't PlayStation remember. PlayStation Three. PlayStation yeah. Three, yeah. Uh, and whoever comes out on top gets a title opportunity at WrestleMania. Um, and it was uh, interesting to see that the winner this year was uh, a wrestler named Edge, uh, who. Uh, he's been around a while. He's that name is familiar to me. Yeah, he's been around a long time. Um, he had a little bit where he was sort of semi-retired for a little bit um, due to concerns about a neck injury that he sustained. Um, but he rehabbed it back to health, and mm-hmm. the doctors gave him a clean bill of health. So he came back into the WWE, and they've rewarded him now with a shot um for a title at wrestlemania um so it's gonna be interesting to see who he picks and who he chooses for that title match at wrestlemania um and it was just uh, it was good to see like uh, a story like that you know edge really had to go through a lot uh to to pull out this win 
uh, between injury history and, and him slowly kind of gaining back the, not just the, the trust, but the, um, the status of being the top person. Yeah. You know, like there's only two world title belts that you can win in WWE. So you, you, you have to be the top dog of, of the whole roster to even earn a shot at, at those, you know, world title, uh, world title matches and to do it at WrestleMania is a huge one. So it's interesting that edge, uh, was picked to win the Royal Rumble, and he has done so, and he's now going to have a headlining event at WrestleMania. Um, it was very, it was, it was a good, I think, crowd fan service uh, win, if you want to take it as that. Okay. Um, so, quick little wrestling aside there. It, again, it's weird. Wrestling is one of those things that we could actually fit in sports or entertainment. I, I think we have. I mean, throughout the history of the podcast, put it in, you know, either or category. Yeah. So now I've put it in, in the introduction portion of the show. So all it needs is an odd news story and, and oh, it'll I'm complete sh- the cycle. I'm sure there's one out there. I'm sure we've had a story where people have wrestled or done something crazy in that theme. So you know? if there's if there if we get a WWE odd news story, it will have completed the the crispy noodle trifecta. Or quad vector, yeah. the quad, the quad tyke, quad from tech. Bioshock, yeah, quad, quad tech, tech. Yeah. yeah. There you go. We'll have the crispy noodle quad tech award, and we'll send it to Triple H <laughs> and WWE. Congratulations! Oh, fantastic! <laughs> there you go. A new award. We've just invented it right now. <laughs> That's a major award. It's a major award. Yes, fantastic. <laughs> um, okay, so <laughs> now that introduction is officially out of the way. This is technically supposed to be sports now that we're diving into, but I feel like I've just taken over the show now because before we get into the big football game that everyone's talking about, I have to mention this story. This is getting actually a lot of traction on social media for, okay. for golf being an old man sport the the Twitter users and the Twitter crowd and the social media crowd, they have come out in full force against golfer Patrick Reed, uh, okay. who is now being dubbed the cheater of the PGA. Uh, this is an interesting story. I think, Mike, you're going to actually like this one. Okay, what do you got? Um, so uh, we have in the golf universe, we have the four masters. Those are like the big prestigious events. Right. But, but then weekly, you know, you have weekly tournaments that, you know, the golfers use to you know, supplement their salary, but also train and get ready for those major tournament events. And the past weekend was the Farmers Insurance Open. How uh, illustrious. <laughs> <laughs> um, but nevertheless, hey, you still win money at these things. So, That's you know, true. That's yeah, true. It's, it's still important to the golfers. Um, and this interesting scenario played out um patrick reed took a second shot on a par five on the course and he declared that his ball was quote embedded um the term is important because there is a rule for embedded relief um, okay. whenever the course conditions are not um 100 up to snuff with strict uh rules of golf and for this uh, tournament, it was announced that there was going to be this rule put in place because the golf course had flooded a little bit during the weekend. Okay. So this rule was known to all the golfers. So it made sense that this rule would be activated. Um, so what it basically what it entitles to is if the ball is embedded, meaning that the ball has, has sunken into the ground. Okay. The, the, a, a portion of the ball has to be in the ground, making it uh, extremely difficult for you to try and scoop the ball out of the grass right. because it's because it's actually in the dirt. Right. It's, like it's gone through the earth. <laughs> Let me try and put it to you that way. Okay. Um, you are allowed at this point to pick up the ball, clean the ball, and then you get a free drop um, a club length away from the original divot, which okay. is a huge advantage when you think okay. about it. 
You get yeah, the, that's, a ball. that's a pretty yeah, that's pretty good distance. Yeah, and you get to place it at the spot of your choosing. You yeah. know, so maybe you can get it towards the fairway, or maybe you get it away from an obstacle or something that might be in your path on your next shot. It, there, it's a pretty good advantage to have. It doesn't count as a stroke penalty. It's a free play. Wow. Yeah. Right. It's pretty lenient, right? When you think about it. Yeah, it is. Um, so he called this out that his ball was embedded. Um, and he kind of did it. Uh, I don't want to say quickly because it may sound like he ran over there, but he did do it in a heightened state and without an official to verify that the ball was indeed embedded. Um, so it plays out as such. Uh, the PGA rewatched the films and noted that he did take all the precautions that he was supposed to do. He left a T marker where the original marker, where the original divot was. Um, he picked up the ball, he cleaned it up. He didn't use a different ball or anything. And basically, according to the letter of the law, he did everything fine. Okay. But on the TV broadcast, uh, commentators and audience and the Twitter mob, they quickly noted out that they're, they're, this seemed a little fishy. Uh, between the fact that he was kind of in a rush to get this um, declared embedded without the official, um, and then also on a replay of his shot, the commentators point out that he definitely had a second bounce when the ball landed. So try to use some physics here. Yeah. The ball lands and that first landing spot doesn't go into the dirt, but then the second bounce does go into the dirt. <laughs> uh, that doesn't seem physically possible. Yeah. Because I mean, it's losing a lot of its uh, velocity or, you know, force. Yeah. After that, after that first bounce. I guess my question is, could it be embedded? Maybe there was like a particularly like swampy, soggy bit. Maybe it was like, you know, kind of like, you know, after the first hit, it bounced into like a patch where it was like a, like a puddle and some like really like marshy grass or something. Cause you said the, the course had flooded. Yeah. So I mean, so that, that, that might be it. It is possible that maybe his ball out of all the bounces took the weirdest bounce that it, and, and landed in the, the swampy part of that golf course it's possible um not likely it just basically it's one of those things where it, it doesn't seem like he had the the good intention okay you know? um and although pga the pga rules officials they've come out and they've defended him they said that he's done he's done everything right uh, I still think this has left a weird taste in a lot of golf fans uh, mouth and apparently the commentators, cause they pointed this out that this is this, that there was something fishy about all this. Um, Nick Faldo uh, commented on the broadcast that quote, he will now have a black cloud unquote over any further suggestions to officials. Okay. Um, this is also because Reed has had a history of kind of doing things a little, Mm. not it you know a little bit you know to game the system his way right right he's stretching and bending the rules yeah um apparently he had a past incident where he took an illegal practice swing in a sand bunker that he tried to hide um, what does that but, even mean illegal practice swing well so, oh i'm glad you asked um so <laughs> golf has the weirdest rules they're so <laughs> you are not allowed to take a a swing in the practice in you're not allowed to take a practice swing that connects to the sand in a sand bunker once you swing and it hits sand that counts as a stroke period no oh, okay you're not allowed to do a practice swing in the sand bunker okay and apparently he he did one he tried to hide it from uh some some officials in a tournament uh, a couple of years so, back so wait you're not allowed to do a practice swing in a sand in, bunker no not no. at all why no. not no you you can't you, you they don't want you, the sand. you said you can't connect with the sand because that like yeah. i guess changes the actual playing field right you'll, you'll you'll figure out you know whether the sand is you know it's kind of loose or hard or firm 
the idea of being a sand bunker is you're supposed to be penalized. It's supposed to be a tough shot. So right. if you take a practice swing in the sand, you're, you're kind of gaining an unfair advantage. And you're also spreading sand around the golf course, which the golf course doesn't want. It's right. not good for uh. other parts of the grass. Okay. So it's, it's not good for the course and it's not good for the competition. That's a rule right. that's been in place. <laughs> you having fun? I, I <laughs> golf just has the strangest rules, like stuff like, what, what was it the one time where it like landed on like a little ant hill or a, or a mole hill or something? And, and they argued over whether or not it's an animal obstructing the, the oh golf ball. God. Only golf has stupid ass rules like this. Okay. So embedded and practice swings and animal interference. It's the yeah. only sport rich with this type of nonsense. Hey, Mike, it could be worse. We could be trying to golf during World War Three. <laughs> oh my God. Now that was a great segment. Yeah, we've had we had a bit about uh, weird golf rules uh, in case World War II happens in America. Uh, that's oh my uh, god, that's it, it, definitely on our YouTube page. Go check that out. If you oh know. yeah, absolutely, that's a classic bit. Yeah, that so, was real. Uh, hey, it was it was real. What happens if Hitler comes through the seventeenth green and we got to finish this round? <laughs> right, exactly. Golf cannot be stopped for any reason. Right. Uh uh-uh, We got to wrap up this back nine. Come on, move it, Hitler. <laughs> <laughs> so is, is this guy, is this uh, Patrick Reed, the new Hitler of golf from the way people are seem to be treating him? Because this didn't hit my sphere of influence at all. Uh, uh, I, what, I, I, what do you mean? Does he deserve the backlash? Does he not deserve the backlash? How, I, how do you, how do you read wanna, this? I want to go as far as to say he's Hitler. Um, okay. But I would say he's kind of right now – he's like on that bill belichick vibe okay you know doing whatever where, it takes to win bending and, whatever rules he can and 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 if it's not outright written he's going to take advantage of it that's where i kind of see him he's in that realm where if it doesn't say in the rule book i don't have to do x y and z i'm not doing it you know like he's okay. in, i think he's in that kind of bill belichick mindset if you will you know I'm going to take the same stance towards him as I did towards Bill Belichick is what he's, is what he's doing illegal or immoral. I I don't think so. Is it obnoxious? Sure. I guess, but the fault isn't on him. The fault is, you know, why didn't officials verify it? Why didn't the officials be like, hold up before you move the ball, let's, let's double check. You know, I mean, aren't there people around like watching this stuff? I know you said there was only volunteer staff. Shouldn't the volunteer staff have been like, Let's call over an actual official. Let's double check this because embedded, this embedded rule, as with a lot of golf, it seems very subjective. You know, who is to say, you know, it's embedded versus not embedded. You know, I'm assuming every golfer has their own interpretation of what embedded means to them. So the fault is not on Reed. Reed saw an area in which he could take advantage and golf was like, okay, they're not even going to bother to double check. That's on PGA, not on, not on Reed. Yeah, um, and to also kind of further legitimize Reed's claim, um, Rory McIlroy had a similar incident happen to him that weekend on the 18th hole, and he did the exact same thing. And PGA so should we crucify said, him too? Yeah, and PGA said he did everything right as well. So I, I get it's because there was a second bounce, but I mean, like you said, the course had flooded. Mm-hmm. So. Who's to say there wasn't like a particularly marshy, wet? You know, you know how grass and mud get you know who is to say it wasn't actually embedded you know um but at the same time it is weird that he's kind of having this weird track record of like going against the rules you know yeah it doesn't sit right there's something up there's something up you know Uh, i just i can't quite put my finger on it there's something up with that guy (laughs) so you you don't trust him you you think he's more you think he's more foul than fair a little bit, yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong. He shouldn't be penalized. PGA came out and said he did everything right. Right. I'm going to keep my eye on him. There's something. <laughs> if I'm the sheriff of the PGA, I'm keeping my eye on him. There's there's something fishy about this fella. I don't trust him. Okay. The sheriff of the PGA. Yeah, I'm going to keep my now, eye on him. That That is a job that was designed just for you, Rich. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> 
Uh, okay, I know Mike is in pain talking about golf in the middle of February. So let's move on. It is time for football talk. But yes. just when you think the big game wasn't enough news, we get our first big major trade headline of 2021. Folks, get used to it. This is going to be a big year for quarterback movement. And we have yeah. our first big domino to fall. Happened Saturday night, too, right in the middle of kind of, uh, you know, the weekend and everything going good. The Detroit Lions decide to deal Matt Stafford to the Rams for Jared Goff, two first-round picks, and a third-round pick. Yeah. Wow. This was, this was really shocking. I, I mean, well, one, you know, you never see some you, – you very rarely see a swap of franchise quarterbacks like that. I mean, I, I can't even give you an example. I mean, Eli and Phillip Rivers back in the day. Yeah. You know, that, that's the last one that I could think of where two teams swapped supposed franchise quarterbacks, and they were both unproven at the time. So, you know, it's not even fair to compare there. I mean, you have two proven commodities here, Matt Stafford and, and Jared Goff, and there's repercussions for this all throughout the league because, you know, what does this say about – the Rams and their belief in Jared Goff. And, you know, what does this say about other quarterbacks that find themselves in similar positions? Deshaun Watson, Carson Wentz, Dak Prescott, is anybody safe? You know, I, I think I text this to you that the old rules of how we view franchise players are out the window. I mean, this started a few years ago when, you know, I forget who traded for Jalen Ramsey at King's Ransom for Jalen Ramsey and Khalil Mack. And teams are viewing these draft picks you know, the Patriots had always traded away their first round pick because it was always the 31st or 32nd pick for, you know, a proven player. And, and it seems to be gaining even more steam, this movement in the NFL where they're like, we're just going to trade over this huge amount of picks. I mean, look, the Texans, they trade away all their picks. Yeah, they went you know? the other direction. Um, that, that's not a great example of how to do it correctly. But the point is that this is like a growing trend in the NFL where you know it's nobody is safe no matter the contract or the legacy or how highly they were drafted anybody can go at any time yeah and for me this really signifies the rams think that next year is super bowl or bust um because well, they have that defense they got to capitalize on it right and unfortunately jared golf they kind of knew his ceiling you know they, they kind of thought this is Man, the that's furthest really we're gonna shocking, get though. with them but that's really shocking though, because he, I mean, he was a decent starter for them. You know, I, I don't know if there was a marked upgrade in switching to Matt Stafford. I mean, I know Stafford's been doing it longer and doing it, you know, just to consistency is a question mark there because you don't know if he's going to be able to stay healthy, but Jared Goff, I mean, I'm looking at his stats here and he was, he was perfectly fine for them. You know, I, there was tons of teams that would kill for a quarterback of his caliber. That is you know? true. <laughs> yeah, that, that is that is the odd part. Like, Jared Goff is a good, like, if you had to rank all of the quarterbacks, Jared Goff is probably in that, like, 16, 17, 18 range. He's yeah. definitely not in, like, the bottom five. No. But it is funny that when you're talking about these, you know, when you're talking about trades of this caliber – it, all of a sudden it, it makes sense for the Rams. You know, I, I, they think that this is their Super Bowl window in 2021 and they want a quarterback that can, you know, hang in there, take the hits and throw the, throw the rock. Uh, and, and but you know, it, it's odd because I'm, I'm just looking at their stats and stats aren't a great way to go by it, but Matt Stafford, um, he only had one season where he eclipsed, one uh, quarterback rating of a hundred Jared Goff already uh, in his short career has done it uh, twice, you know? So, and I know that's not the end all be all metric, but I just, I, I think you got to take that with a grain of salt because Detroit has never really complimented Stafford with a, a true running game. Yeah. But he said he had Calvin Johnson. That is true. <laughs> he had Megatron, but then Megatron left. But then Megatron, Megatron left. retired. So it all comes down to Megatron, that bastard, <laughs> that rat bastard retiring. He retired early back when yeah. he retired. Um, I, I, just, I just think it's odd. I don't see this as an upgrade for either team. This is like a lateral trade. It's like 
The Lions, they're done with Stafford. They want to move on. The Rams, apparently done with Goff. They want to move on. I, I, I think this is a little bit of an upgrade for the Rams. I, I, th- I, I Stafford using... First off, Stafford having a, a significant running game is really going to be interesting to see. Stafford should be much, he should be better weathered to go through a full 16 game season since he's not going to be taking the constant hits that he had to in Detroit when they had no running game. I mean, literally, who was the yeah. running back for the Detroit Lions? I couldn't even tell you. You know, yeah, you want me to tell you? Go ahead. It was Adrian Peterson. Oh my God, Adrian Peterson. What is he? Yeah. Like 47 by now? Yeah, so I mean that's what he's been working with. <laughs> I yeah. mean, now he's going to go to a, a LA Rams team that has a three, uh, at least a two had it running back uh, monster. Um, be, uh, I forget the guy's names off the top of my head right now because I'm in the middle of, of thinking of quarterbacks. Um, but they have a formidable running attack like that. That is something that's going to benefit Stafford infinitely, um, just in terms of you know, handling the pressure, him actually staying on the field and not getting injured, him not running around for his life um, and a quality defense. I mean, this, this could be, you know, I'm not saying they're the Super Bowl favorites, but they're going to contend in 2021. I, I think, I think they, they, this is the thing. This is the thing is Stafford's 32 going on 33. And the Rams gave up two first round picks, a third round pick and a young franchise quarterback. The, the, the Rams have to think that it's this year or next because they do. I mean, That's what I'm saying. They absolutely, but like, do. I, it just seems like such an incredibly risky move because you have so much to contend with. Do you really think that this one player is going to elevate you over the Packers and the Bucks? And, you know, um, the Seahawks, you know, your other division rivals. Is this one move enough? The Saints, you know, Um, there's just, I don't know, you're giving up a huge ransom for, you know, these two years. But the Rams, they were they were in and out of it so quickly. And was it all golf's fault? Well, I I mean, he got hurt. He got hurt towards the the run and. So does Matt Stafford. Matt Stafford's got, got, he's got age against him too. I'm just saying, look, the deal is. Not to the degree as golf. Golf Not to the degree as golf. Golf has been hurt much more than Stafford. What are you talking about? Look at his stats right here. He's played 15 games, 16 games, 16 games, 15 games. Matt Stafford, Matt Stafford's been chronically injured. I'm looking at some of his numbers here. Okay. Well, He's played a lot of 16 game seasons. Why does it seem like both these quarterbacks are injured way more than their stats? It says they both started a lot yeah. of 16 game seasons. So golf, maybe well, just... golf was definitely hurt at, at, towards the end of the season. He, he definitely had a fractured thumb and he had to get thumb surgery. Maybe that, maybe the LA Rams. Read maybe something. they think that he's not, he's not going to be able to come back the same way that he was yeah. before. Maybe the Rams read something in that report from the doctor, you know, from the thumb surgery and was like, uh, we need to get rid of him. I will say this about the move. I appreciate the decisiveness of it because both of us being fans of a team who seems to be very wishy-washy at the quarterback position, you know, sometimes you just like to see decisiveness and you have to at some point or another decide if this guy's going to be the next, the guy, or you're going to start looking for the next guy, you know? So the Rams right or wrong, they made a decision and now they can move forward with that decision instead of being stuck in quarterback limbo like the Eagles potentially will be. Yeah. Um, um, just a fun little tack note that I wanted to yeah. add on the end of that. Um, Detroit had other offers for Stafford from Washington, Carolina, Indianapolis. So yeah, there is interest going around for all the quarterbacks. It's happening. And I'm telling you, man, this quarterback market is going to remain volatile the next several months until, you know, the next season starts. Um, we went over that list last week of all the quarterbacks who could change teams. And here we go already. Two big names. I don't think anybody is safe. I don't, and, and, you know, I, I hear the talk that Carson Wentz isn't going to get moved and such and such isn't going to get moved. I think at this point, after a deal like this, I think all names are on the table. Yeah, it's possible. 
Uh, all right, so there you go. Big news right there. And now we can finally dive into <laughs> Super Bowl talk. Um, and every year, without fail, I always try to scourge the internet and find the best prop bets that you can actually gamble on uh, for this year's Super Bowl. Don't have the gambling music because I we're know. not. It's not know, the same. It's not the same. But we're still going to try and make it seem like we're back at home with uh, the prop bets here. Um, so I know uh, you love all these wacky prop bets. Oh, so yeah. I, I pulled some of the oddest ones here for you. Okay. And the first one has to do with the Zoom pregame show. Oh, my God. Yep. Oh, man. Okay. Miley, Miley Cyrus is doing the Zoom pregame show. And you can bet what color hair she will have at the tailgate show. Um, blonde or white is the favorite. Um, you have to lie a little bit to make even money with that bet. Uh, brown is at even money. Uh, red is at three to one. And purple is at five to one. Interesting. So, there you go. You can bet on her hair color. <laughs> so I'm trying to think here. I guess, yeah, both teams have red as their team color. Yeah. So, all right. Interesting. Um, up next, uh, this is always a popular one. The length of the national anthem. The over-under is two minutes. Two minutes. Who's singing it? Um, that's a good question. Who is singing it? I don't even know. <laughs> That's how much I don't care about the beginning of the show. Just let me I mean, know when, when the kickoff happens. All right. Yeah, I don't that, care. That, that's all I care about. I, I don't all that care. Stuff I, don't, I don't care about the zoom pregame show. What the, f that sounds horrible. I don't, people don't want to even be part of zoom right now, let alone. I got to be part of the zoom pregame show. No. Okay, so I think I may have found it. This was one of this article published four hours ago. Um, the NFL has tabbed a duo to sing the country's anthem this go around with country star Eric Church and R&B artist Jasmine Sullivan pairing oh, up boy. to sing the anthem prior to the big game. So it's a it's a duet. I, I think that's going over two minutes. Yeah, it seems like one of them's gonna you know use the use the spotlight a little bit long. Oh yeah. yeah, that sounds right. I'd go over. I think I think over too. Easy. There All you right. go. We should place a bet on that one. We should. We should. That's a good one. There All we right. go. What else he got? So we already it, got man. we already got one bet placed. Um, will the artist forget or emit a word during the national anthem? If they do and you bet money on it, it's 12 to 1. So I think given the fact that there's two of them, one of them will. One of them will. I mean, think about it. the possibility of already forgetting or missing a word is already, you know, it's it's not a certain thing um, that they're going to remember all the words. We've years past we've seen singers botch it. So now there's two potential botchers. Not only that, but is this in person? Is this over Zoom? Is this done? You know, what, how how logistically is this being done? So that could also come in, uh, you know, play a factor in this. I think, yeah. I think one of them will mess up. Now, wait, because there are two of them, do they both have to miss a word? Just one of them has to miss a word. Like, what is the criteria I, I, here? I'm going to go with one of them has to miss a word because it says, will the will the artist forget or admit a word during the national? I think it's, I think it's just once. Okay. Then, yeah, I think they will. Um, okay. Um, another weird color one here for you. Uh, Bruce Arians is famous for his flat cap hats. Did you okay. know that? He's, he's, I don't know. I didn't know that. What, he's known for wearing his flat cap hat. And you can bet on what color flat cap hat will he wear. Um, if I just want to keep hearing you say flat cap hat. <laughs> yeah, this, this, they should market this better. This doesn't sound right. Flat cap hat. Uh, the primary color. Uh, if it's red, you have to lay a little bit of money to, to make money. Okay. Uh, white is three to two. Uh, gray is three to two. Black is five to one. Okay. Hmm. You know, again, 
I, you've pointed this out every year. Why can't like just like a friend of Bruce Arians be like, yeah. do me a favor, wear this black hat. Right, exactly, right? Look, I'm just saying, if I knew somebody who was an NFL head coach in the Super Bowl and they had a prop bet about their apparel, I'd be like, look, just, just do me this one solid. Right. There has to be so many, like how many, how many of Bruce Arians friends do you think are going to make, you know, a tidy sum of money on this because he's going to wear a specific type of hat and he's going to tell them what type of hat he's going to wear. Yeah. Uh, up next, uh, you might find this one interesting. Um, Tony Romo is actually doing the play-by-play for the Super nice. Bowl. He's good. He's good. Um, well, how good do you think he is? Will he correctly predict an offensive play before it is snapped? Yes, because that, that's his, that's his whole gimmick. That's why he got to be so well-known and broadcasting, you know, the past couple of years is because he can predict plays before they happen. So I think, yeah, he, during the Super Bowl, he, oh, it's going to be great. He's, I think he's going to do a good job. I think he's going to predict. But, but now here's the thing. Not only does he have to do it, he's got to correctly do it. He's got to actually correctly call the play. Okay. So what does that mean? Does that mean he's got to say, oh, there's going to be spider two Y banana. Yeah. It's got to be spider two Y banana. Okay. So he can't just be like, this is going to be like a halfback dive or this is going to be, you know, a five yard in it has to be specifically the entire play call. How, how, how do you check that? He's got to, I think he's got to be correct in the overall theme of the play. No, I've decided I don't like the wording of this bet. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's yeah. Because, because here's the thing. He could be like, Oh, there's a five yard in and you can have four wide receivers run a five yard in, but the quarterback checks down to the swing route. So did he predict, predict it correctly or yeah. did he predict, predict it incorrectly? I don't know. You know I don't I mean? think that would count. So it's whoever gets the ball. I think it would have to be also, I guess the play would have to be executed correctly too. That as well. Yeah. Because what if he says, Oh, it's going to be this. And you know, the quarterback drops back to pass all the routes are doing exactly what he said. And there's a fumble. Yeah. The quarterback, you know, trips or yeah, there's a fumble, you know? Yeah. So so there's actually three parts to that. When you think about it, I don't like it. I don't, it's a bad bet, Rich. It's a bad bet. Yeah, that's why I think it's being offered at even money. Yeah, too subjective, it, man. It's, it sounds like, oh, that's easy, but there's a lot of moving parts to that. Tony yeah. Rupp's got to call the play right. Yep. The play has to actually happen as designed, and then the play has to be executed perfectly. So, yeah, yeah no. that, may not, that may not come out right. Listen, listen to me, gamblers. It's a bad bet. Don't do it. Uh, okay. Uh, then we always have these random cross bets with different sports um, or different elements. Um, so for example, there's a bet where apparently, uh, the Celtics are playing a game at the exact, or probably before the game before or after the, the Super Bowl. Um, so you can bet, uh, which will be higher Patrick Mahomes passing yards versus, Devin Booker's total points in his game against the Celtics. Uh, you know, some of these, yeah. you know, you can come up with anything. Ronald Jones is carries versus the number of assists Chris Paul will have versus the Celtics. What? Yeah. It's crazy. All that, you know, that's too much to keep track of. <laughs> yeah. Um, will Clyde Edwards Hilaire have more rushing yards than the age of the Super Bowl uh, winning quarterback. <laughs> yeah so okay so yes and that last one i think yes because he would only have to rush for 40 what 44 yards yeah to beat both yeah does he not rush for a lot of yards is that the, is that the problem what, what? well yeah because it's him Le'Veon bell and patrick mahomes oh uh, yeah i guess those are weird bets Right. I, 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 yeah. That's where it gets interesting. Yeah. Uh, all right. How about the halftime show? The halftime okay. show. Uh, I know it's the weekend because I like okay. that song, uh, Blinding Lights. Sure. I like that song. That's it. That's the only reason why I, I know the weekend. I don't know what song that is. I may have heard it, but I'm old. So, yeah. So, good job. 
apparently the weekend is known for um gloves on their hands uh in spirit to michael jackson okay so will the weekend first come out on the stage with gloves on their hands um you have to lay significant amount if it's yes uh if they don't it's three to one okay it is well, it mean, is tampa bay it is gonna be hot i don't think that matters it's gonna no. be hot it's not i don't think it's gonna be that hot and I, I don't think it'll prevent them from wearing gloves i think if that's their gimmick you know they're gonna want to do their gimmick on the big you know the biggest stage so mm-hmm. i think they're gonna do the gloves okay um, and I mentioned that they're big fans of Michael Jackson. There is right. a rumor that they are going to have some sort of Michael Jackson holographic performing thing incorporated <laughs> in their set. Sure. Why not? Um, if you bet on this and it does happen, it's 12 to one. So Vegas doesn't think it's actually happening. You know why? It's probably really hard to get the rights for that. Yeah, that's probably a hot right. Graphic, Michael. Yeah, so it's you know I agree. It probably won't happen. Okay. Um, and then who will join the weekend as their final guest on the stage? Um, it could be Ariana Grande at three to two, uh, Drake at two to one, Doja Cat at three to one, BTS at four to one. And Kenny G at five to one. How about I, none of the above? Probably. I don't. I don't know anything about music. Apparently, I don't. Why is I, Kenny G? Why is Kenny G on here? Is I he don't a, know. Does he have a thing with the weekend? I don't know. I I, I don't know. I, I know. And very- Doja, Doja Cat. By the way, Mike, Doja Cat is the 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 the, the singer that sang that Moo Cow song. Remember, the we had that Moo Cow song. <laughs> yeah it was a while ago it was like two years ago where she was like i'm a cow i'm a cow rich i can't remember what happened two weeks ago you want me to remember what happened two years ago a moo cow song yeah we played it on the podcast i'm gonna have to look it up after the podcast but just because of that i'm gonna that that's the one they're they're gonna they're gonna you know have a collaboration on on a moo cow song sequel with doja cat yeah. So uh, that's three to one. So maybe okay, if you're right, dude. there you go. Make some money on that. All right. And I know you love this one. This is a classic. We've been covering this every year. The color yep. of the liquid being poured on the winning coach's head. Well, I think you have the winning color right there because both teams, their team color is red. So is red an option? It is, but it's not the favorite. No. Is it still um, clear or yellow or whatever it is? Uh, orange is the favorite at even really? money. Yeah, people okay. like orange. Okay, I uh, like orange. That's even money. Uh, red, right here, red is three to one. Okay. So you could make money if that happens. Uh, yellow, green, or lime is four to one. Purple is six to one. Clear is six to one. Blue, not getting any love. They're the long shot at seven to one. Okay, interesting. There you go. Some colors to bet on if you want. Again, the the water boys, the equipment managers could make a killing. They're probably not allowed to though. They're probably not allowed to gamble because that would just be a conflict of interest. But man, could you imagine? Could you imagine being the water boy and being like, I got the blue Gatorade. Yep. If we win, I'm going to make some money, you yep. know? All right. And one more here. This is oh. what I think you may be interested in. Okay. All right. Now, Andy <laughs> Reed, he loves his food. Okay. And there have been multiple times that he has said food as analogy to something in food in press conferences. He's mentioned sweet and sour pork a couple of times. He's mentioned oh, yeah. barbecue. Okay. Right? Yeah. Will Andy Reid explicitly say the word burger in a post-game press conference? Well, hear me out on this. Okay. Because if he does, it's five to one. Okay. I've got 
kind of tempted to throw 10 bucks on that. That's interesting. He has to specifically say the word burger. Burger at some point in a post-game uh, interview. So what about variations thereof, like a cheeseburger? Yeah, that would count. Or hamburger. The word is burger. Yeah, the word is burger. burger. Yep. Maybe it says burgers. That counts. Burger is is part of the root okay. of the word. I mean, how often does he really do this, though? He likes his food. He does like his food. That's true. <laughs> I mean, you never know. I, you know, it would be fun to throw money on that, just in case. You know, you I, I don't think it'll. I don't think it'll happen, but. Just in the off case, in the off chance, yeah, because Reed does love his food. Yep. All right, and there you go. That's what I have for you for the weird Super Bowl prop bets that you can actually make. They're all available, so go check them out and see if uh, any of them entice you or we've made arguments <laughs> to entice you to bet on those. But let's get to the ultimate pick. This is yep. it. It is time. The Kansas City Chiefs literally at the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, literally a home Super Bowl for Tom Brady and the Buccaneers this Sunday, Super Bowl 55. Who wins the game? Oh man, this is such a tough one. You have the new goat versus the, the goat. You have Patrick Holmes, the new hotness versus Tom Brady. This is a really, really tough one because I don't think, and I'm going to include myself in, in this category, I don't think anybody expected the Buccaneers to turn into the team that they did. You know, yes, Tom Brady would give them a couple of wins, but I don't think anybody envisioned them going straight to the Super Bowl as soon as they got Tom Brady in such a weird year. Um, but, man, they've just been super impressive. I mean, offensively, defensively, it seems like they're clicking – you know, in all facets of the game. But earlier in the season, the Chiefs did beat them. Chiefs did win a head-to-head matchup. Not only that, but Patrick Mahomes, you know, plays, you know, I have the, the, the head-to-head matchup between Mahomes and Brady here, and Mahomes plays significantly better, even though that they're, the two quarterbacks are tied 2-2 when facing the other, the other quarterback. You know what? It happens very rarely but I could see the Chiefs winning a repeat Super Bowl here. Okay. I, did, I don't think I'm. I don't think I'm going to overcomplicate. I know you know you always say, or we always used to say, you know, you can't pick against Brady in the Super Bowl. But, but then again, they are at home. They don't have to travel. You know, you got the home crowd team behind the the you know the 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 home team. Uh, oh my God, why can't I talk? The hometown crowd behind you. Um, man, I don't know. But then again, Andy Reid and the Chiefs have been there before. They've done it. They're used to this. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers, with the exception of Brady and Gronk, this is new territory for them. No, I'm going to stick with my gut. I'm going to go with the Chiefs. All right. Yeah. What do you What do you think, Rich? Let's do it. I want I want to see the Chiefs win this. Um, look, I I I know it's Brady, but. Oh man, I, I can't, I cannot, I will be so disappointed if Brady wins a seventh Super Bowl ring. It's just, it's not fair. It's not fair at that point. <laughs> so just for the sake of my mentality, for the sake of everything that I know about football, I want, it has to be the Chiefs. I want the Chiefs to win this. I think they cover the spread. Uh, I want to see Patrick Mahomes wow. light this game up. I'm going all in on Big Red. Come on. This is it. You got to okay. take down Tom Brady. I cannot, I do not want to see Tom Brady win another Super Bowl. It, 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 it just, it would blow my mind. How could, oh, it can't happen. It just can't. He can't keep getting away with this. I know. It doesn't seem real that he was able to make it all the way back to the Super Bowl with a completely different team in his first year with that team. And it just, it just doesn't make any sense. It no. literally does not make it. And we've bet against, you know, we've bet against them or picked against them basically the entire, or at least I think I have the entire time through the playoffs. So he could end up winning a seventh Super Bowl. I mean, I know I picked the, I know I picked the chiefs, but I'm like only barely like, it's like a 51 49 decision here. 
you know, uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna. There, there's still a significant part of my mind that thinks that Brady is going to end up winning this, even though I'm, I picked the I'm, Chiefs. I'm gonna hope Patrick Mahomes falls out on this one. He he does his magic, you know, and covers the spread. That's what I'm going with. I can't, I can't, <laughs> I can't see Brady winning a seventh Super Bowl. It's oh, it would be really <laughs> weird. It could happen. It could happen. It could, but I'm going with, with Chiefs. Come on, Big Red. Don't let me down. <laughs> Good old buddy. Don't let me down. Okay. All right. Uh, that is enough sports for now. We got to move on to entertainment. Um, let's cover this t- topic first because I know people are excited about Mass Effect whenever there's news that comes from Mass Effect. And the announcement dropped uh, very recently that the Mass Effect Legendary Edition uh, is coming to new consoles. Uh, this looks uh, like a must-have for every Mass Effect fan. Um, yeah. 4K, HDR, 60 frames per second. Um, all the DLC is included in the yeah. Legendary Edition. So literally from start to finish, you're going to have every single bit of contact uh, c- content from the shepherd story um this is th- this seems like a must have and uh i, I think you're going to be on that bandwagon considering your background right mike yeah i know i am uh where am i in the uh the citadel this is i think shepherd's apartment in the citadel yeah um i am beyond thrilled um that the mass effect legendary edition is coming out um, release date was announced today, May 14th. So not too much longer to go to get our hands on this. Um, I'm incredibly excited for this, you know, not just to replay the game, but for some of the things that have been promised in legendary edition, I'm really excited to see how they implement. So, you know, first right off the bat, like you mentioned, the, the new visuals is going to be, um, absolutely breathtaking. They've already put out a couple of photos and a couple of videos where you, know, you can swap back and forth between, the original and the remastered version and it's completely different especially scenes from the first game which was very rough yeah um, and i'm really excited to read i've been reading a lot of previews and they're saying that it's not just visuals it's also they're tweaking the ui the user interface they're also making some slight gameplay tweaks to the first mass effect game dedicated melee button uh better controls for the mako the the vehicle that you drive on the planets um they are changing the way that guns work. Um, you know, before, you know, if you were using a gun that your character hadn't trained in, you'd have a really bad uh, aiming penalty, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, so they're changing all that to make it more streamlined, to bring it closer to the gameplay of the second and third games. Not all the way, because that would, you know, require a complete rewrite. Um, but it's not just visuals. They're also tinkering with the gameplay itself. And across the board, they're doing that. They're fixing bugs. They're cleaning up stuff. Um, The other thing that I thought was really cool is a single character creator. So, you know, when you play these games originally, you would have to create your character every time or, you know, use that code that you had to like try and. Yeah. Character code. But like it never, it like never worked (laughs) properly. You know, It, Mm -hmm. it never looked as good. So now there's one character creator with, all the options from all three games. So you can have, you know, your one character through all three of them without having to remake the character or use a code or, you know, um, tinker with it too much. Um, So I'm just really excited to dive back into the universe and play it from start to finish with all the DLC included from the get-go. Because when I played these games originally, you know, I would have to wait for the DLC to come out and then I have to go back and replay the whole game with the DLC in it. Now I can just continuous one through three with all the DLC properly placed. Um, and it's going to go quicker because they reduced the loading times of elevators as well. So, oh, hey, I like the sound of that. I, I knew you'd be excited to hear that one. They were, <laughs> they were torturous in the first game. You literally could cook your food. Somewhere. Yeah, I mean, we're talking like like a several minute loading screen sometimes with these elevator rides in Mass Effect 1. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm just, I'm super excited to jump back into the series. I've played the series, I think two or three times um, through, um, at least the second and third game. Um, 
What about you, Rich? I know, you know, it's a, one of your favorite franchises as well. Are you excited to dive back into it? You Are you going to replay the whole series? Yeah, I mean, I, I, well, first off, this is going to be when PlayStation 5 eventually comes to my doorstep. So I got to take it with a grain of salt. But uh, yeah, I, I would love to, to get a chance to replay this saga again. It's so good. Um, that's pretty much one of the only reasons why I kept my PlayStation 3 around is just so I have access to those games. Yeah. So it'll be good to get that remastered. Yeah. Yeah. Really excited to, to get my hands on this. And um, I actually think it's available for the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. So I don't know if you oh. need to wait until the place, until you get your PlayStation 5. Now it is going to have, of course, probably a little bit better performance on the new consoles, but I, I'm pretty sure this is being developed for um, the previous gen as well. But either way, whether you're on previous gen or on the newest new gen, you have to make it a point to play Mass Effect Legendary Edition because here's the real reason that I think you're going to want to play this game because clearly they have stuff in store. You know, they, they teased it months ago that they were working on the next Mass Effect and the fact that they're doing the Legendary Edition bringing the original trilogy up to speed on, you know, newer consoles to me indicates that they are going to have a game that ties back into the original trilogy. So if nothing else, you want to make sure you're up to speed on the universe because somewhere down the line on the PlayStation five and Xbox series X, we're going to get new brand new mass effect content, you know, not just remasters. So that's what I'm really, I'm excited for two reasons replaying the series in you know stunning 4k yada 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 all the dlcs gameplay improvements whatever but also because i know it's a precursor to what will happen down the line you know three four years from now we're going to get a brand spanking new next gen mass effect so i'm really excited for everything that this is that this entails yeah this is going to be uh interesting to get your hands on when it comes out. So uh, very excited. Um, and maybe Mass Effect is not dead. Hopefully it's not. I would like I, to see. I think, I think it's far from dead. I mean, they wouldn't go through the trouble of remastering three games, you know, in one package if this were a done deal. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I, I'm excited for the future of Mass Effect. Yeah, me too. Yeah, absolutely. But there's lots of other games that we're excited for, Rich. Um, recently, IMDb came out with a list of the most anticipated video games of 2021. And in a year where we're still dealing with coronavirus, what better way to spend it than in front of the TV playing (laughs) video games, right? Yep. Um, Just really quickly, uh, I wanted to go over some of these top picks here. Um, You know, a few of these have probably been delayed into later years, but, you know, we talked about how Mass Effect is one of our favorite franchises, but another one of our favorite franchises took the top spot in this fan poll uh, God of War Ragnarok coming into the top spot 20, uh, you know, for the most anticipated game of 2021. I just recently replayed the PlayStation 4 God of War. And, you know, it's probably, I, I have to agree here. I think it's probably one of my most anticipated games, Mass Effect notwithstanding. I think Ragnarok is probably my most anticipated game of 2021. I think it's safe to say that's that's higher up because that's a whole new entry right, into, bra- the, new. into yeah. the saga. Like Mass Effect, don't get me wrong, I'm still excited to play it, but it is covering old ground. We yeah, we know how yeah. the story's going to go. Not <laughs> yeah. for God of War Ragnarok. This is going to be a, a a well anticipated entry into the series, especially with the way the last one ended, um, and just how just mature this series has developed. Yeah, uh, I want to see. It came where, so where far. Go. Yeah, it came so far from Kratos just screaming nonstop to like this touching story of like this father son relationship, you know, laying their you know wife slash mother to rest, and like I was like, just I remember playing it the first time, like wow, this is like surprisingly nuanced and deep for God of War, where previous it was like you know, kill God A, kill God B, you know? Yeah, God um, pissed me off. I must kill the God. Right, yeah. Kratos was just this roided out, you know, meathead. Um, and then playing him as as a troubled father, trying to figure out, you know, how he's going to navigate this relationship with his son uh, in the wake of his wife's death. I mean, it was like, 
even hearing me describe the different the two games it's like night and day um so yeah really excited to see where ragnarok takes things um rounding out some of the other games in the top 10 horizon forbidden west uh the sequel to horizon zero dawn um uh, the original was just such a breath of fresh air um, for a Sony exclusive. Um, you know, it was completely different than anything else out there on the market at the time. And I'm really excited to dive back into that world. Uh, you got Far Cry 6 coming out later this year. Um, at number four, you have Hogwarts Legacy, which oh, got, yeah. officially got pushed back to 2022 though. So I don't think this <laughs> officially uh, counts on this list anymore but uh, I, my girlfriend's going to be so sad. I know it's funny because my, even my girlfriend said that she's going to buy that game. Um, not for me, but for her. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that's her game. Yeah. So I'm like, you know, go ahead. If you want to, if you want to buy it, you know, I'll just play it. Um, <laughs> Better watch out. She's going to take your PlayStation. I know. Right. <laughs> um, we have uh, the rest of the list here. Resident evil village. Uh, I've that- never I've seen a couple previews for it. Oh, are, you, looks, are you interested in that one? I, yeah, it looks pretty interesting. Uh, there's a I've lot. Never, of, I've never gotten into Resident Evil personally. I, there, there's, there's a lot of mature themes that have been uh, rumored to go into this edition. Okay. So it's no longer just can't be harsh stick. Okay. So I'm interested to, to hear if this is actually how it pans out. I'm actually, yeah. I don't know, jumping on the Resident Evil bandwagon after eight games. <laughs> yeah, it took, it took them this long to finally uh, catch on to me. Yeah. Uh, we got Diablo 4. I played Diablo 3. A um, lot of fun. Don't know if I would go back in for Diablo 4, but always a possibility. Uh, Gotham Knights, which yeah. is, I always get confused with Gotham Knights and the other Batman game. Arkham Knight. Arkham Knight. No, there's, yeah, I don't know. It's weird, but Gotham Knights is another one on the list. I think that's the multiplayer one, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's a, uh, another one to keep an eye out for Halo Infinite. I know a lot of Xbox fans are really eager to play that. I do want to brag a little bit as PlayStation fans here that the two top spots are PlayStation exclusives. The first Xbox exclusive doesn't hit the list until number eight. <laughs> just goes to, well, you know, it, it, bragging aside, it just goes to show you that like these, what Sony did the previous generation with those exclusives, where before in the Xbox 360 generation it was like, oh, Halo, Halo, Halo. You know, nobody could topple Halo. Now it's Last of Us, God of War, Horizon, it's Uncharted, it's the list goes on and on. Infamous and Sackboy and you know, all these smaller games as well. Um, Sony is kicking ass when it comes to these exclusives. Yep. So I'm really, really excited to see a whole bunch of exclusives on this list as well. Um, and rounding out the top 10, we have Lord of the Rings Gollum, which I assume you will never even look at twice or once. Oh, I'm good. Uh, and then finally, here's something you might look at. Lego Star Wars, the Skywalker saga. Ooh, coming out this go. year. I, you know what, Rich? I, I know you're being sarcastic, but Lego Star Wars was the, some fantastic games. The Lego Star Wars games. Don't yeah. knock them. Don't 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 knock them till you try them. They're a lot of fun. If I get it for free on PlayStation Plus, I'll try. If I get it for free, I'm not gonna spend money on that. Well, there you go. That's that's the top ten. It was a much longer list. There's 35 games on this list, but those were the top 10 uh safe to say i think for the two of us god of war ragnarok is probably our top game we we agree with the majority of fans i mean it's uh so exciting all right uh how about we move to odd news now yeah let's do it because we've done sports we've done entertainment it's time to go to odd news the third part of our news broadcast and mike we're bringing it back to traditional florida Fantastic. Who is this effing guy in Florida? It's Florida and they're crazy. And uh, I know you love a good wacky excuse. So this oh, yeah. one's right up Absolutely. your alley. Uh, an ex-con facing a felony, felony narcotics collar insisted to Florida police that the substance that was found in his possession was not heroin, but rather it was a special chocolate ch- chocolate laxative. <laughs> 
<laughs> yes, you know how they just make chocolate flavored laxatives all over the place. I just yes, have some. Of, of course. And you just carrying around what what do you have? A little baggie of it? A little baggie of his chocolate laxative? Yes. Enjoy. Enjoy. Uh 29-year-old Stephen Coplin was driving near his home Saturday afternoon when he was pulled over for an expired vehicle registration. A subsequent search of the car turned up assorted drug paraphernalia and a plastic bag with meth residue. Cops then also further discovered a bag containing 26 grams of black tar heroin under the driver's seat. Yikes. He he went straight for like the worst drug you could think of. Yeah, right? He went went from just, you know, incidental, like zero to 100. (laughs) Black tar heroin. Also, that traffic stop went wildly out of control. They're like, oh, they just pull them over. Oh, your registration. Next thing, they're finding black tar heroin. Like, yeah, that's a turn for the worst right there. However, Copland insisted that it was not black tar heroin. Instead, he said that it was a chocolate version of (laughs) X-Lax. I... I don't know. I'm calling BS on that one. I don't think X-Lax makes a chocolate variant of itself. I'm pretty sure they don't. I don't I don't think so. I'm going to look Although up right now. Although the marketing for that would be hilarious. Oh my god, I know. The chocolate wait going a... in, the brown coming in. <laughs> oh, wait a second. Hold on. Brown liquid goes in, brown liquid goes out. No, it's Rich. Chocolate X-Lax. They do have chocolate X-Lax. They do? They do. They have chocolate X-Lax. Why have I not heard their marketing more? Chocolated stimulant laxative. X-Lax, whoever your chocolate X-Lax marketing team is, they suck. They need to take advantage of the fact that it's like liquid going in, liquid coming out. Come on. God, Rich. (laughs) That should be your, your theme right there. Guaranteed relief every time right that's like, that that's what their marketing is x lax guaranteed relief every time no i i i demand a much more visual marketing strategy for chocolate laxative so here we go x lax senocides 15 milligrams chocolated stimulant laxatives Mm-mm-mm. yummy that sounds delicious perfect after your rib roast dinner Oh my god! <laughs> Perfect dessert. Yeah. <laughs> could you could you imagine? Could you imagine? Well, you know what it is. It's stamped with X lax on the chocolate nugget, so you can't like pass it off as another type of candy. But could you imagine? That would be oh, funny. You can yeah. melt it down, and you can get a twenty four count for seven eighty at CVS. Oh, there you go. Why are, you go. why am I not hearing about these prices? X lax, your marketing team sucks. You need. It's you- like. You need a Rich, better marketing team. It's literally like, like a chocolate bar. <laughs> like the actual picture, like it's segmented like a Hershey bar. So you just like pull it out and like break off a little piece and eat it like, like chocolate. That's wild. I feel like that would be dangerous. Look at it. It looks like I had no idea. I didn't, I had no idea there was chocolate x lax. So this dude, this dude's not far off. Oh, so that's a good excuse he was trying to whip up then. I, I think it was a good excuse. What it was is he had his chocolate x lax in a little baggie, right? You know, he, he, has, he has problems, okay? Everybody has problems, okay? <laughs> and the car was hot. It's Florida. It's hot down there. You know, he's driving around. The car's getting hot, and it melts in this little baggie. So I see nothing wrong with this. Those cops pulled him over for no reason. This poor guy and is just And it just trying- happens to look like black tar heroin. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Complete coincidence. This guy's just trying to take a poop. You know, <laughs> uh, well, the cops were able to identify that it was black tar heroin. Uh, he was booked in the county jail where he's being held on a $15,000 bond. Oh, there you uh, go. So also, by the way, I have his mugshot. He's not very happy. You took away his chocolate X lax. He is, he's, he is not very happy. No, he's not. That's, <laughs> that's the face. That's the face you make when you're really constipated. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, give me my chocolate x lax back. He's very upset. Oh, I can't poop. I'm in, I'm in prison and I can't poop. Oh. oh, my God. What that is, uh, that is cruel and unusual punishment right there. 
So. Oh my God. There See, you go. Now, now, if we still had the old version of the show, in what have we learned? I would say that there's chocolate X lax. I truly, I truly learned that today. There's chocolate X lax. Yeah, amazing. I didn't know that either. What other flavors does X lax have? X lax, you need a better marketing team. I, I didn't know any of this. No, neither did I. All right, I'm going to look more X lax. Let's see. <laughs> They have blue flavor and chocolate flavor. Just blue? Well, I mean, it's just. <laughs> is, that what Luke, is that what Luke's drinking on Tatooine? Yeah, maybe, yeah. <laughs> no, it's, it's, just, it's just the regular little pills, I think. Oh, uh, okay. It's really, is chocolate the only flavor? They're missing out, man. They're really missing out. I mean, if you're going with chocolate, yeah, you might as well have all of them. You could have orange. You could have uh, lime. You could. Do the Gatorade colors. Lime, why? Gatorade colors of X of XX? I was thinking more like sweet things. You do like like um like a strawberry flavored one, you know? Uh, you do like a vanilla flavored one. You do uh, I don't know, something even wild. Do like something like like a caramel flavored X Lax. Yeah, put it know? in your coffee. Really go to the really Ooh, go. To the yeah. Well, you can make like an X Lax like coffee, coffee creamer. Yeah, yeah, there you go. You'll go to the bathroom. Oh man, you <laughs> either, either the X Lax or the coffee gets you. That's uh, <laughs> that's if you have really serious constipation. Yeah, you have your X Lax coffee. X Lax coffee coming to Starbucks near you. <laughs> I'm just blown away that X Lax made their product in the shape of like a Hershey bar. Yeah, like it's segmented and everything rich. Yeah uh all right we're talking about poop so we got to start wrapping the show up but before we do mike what's your apocalypse activity that you want to recommend to people this weekend um my apocalypse activity is uh playstation plus just dropped their games for february earlier this week um and for those of you that have a playstation 5 they have a brand new playstation 5 game uh destruction all stars which is like it's like a destruction derby game where you crash your cars and then you can also jump out of the car and run around on foot in this arena, dodging other vehicles. I haven't played it yet, but it seems interesting. But the other game that I really want to point out that I cannot stress to people enough to play this game, um, that you also get control ultimate edition for both PlayStation four and PlayStation five. So ultimate edition is the, you know, fully uh, up version. You know, I think it's got like 4K visuals, ray tracing, all that stuff. If you're on PlayStation 5, it also has all the downloadable content. Um, I played the game when it first came out. I played all the downloadable content. It's one of my favorite games from last generation. And um, if you haven't played it yet and you have a PlayStation 5, or if you're, you know, still on PlayStation 4 and you haven't played it yet, you have to play Control Ultimate Edition. I know that was one of your favorite games as well, Rich. Yes, I love Control. It is just like the perfect medley of X Files, Twin Peaks, uh, in in a, a video game. It's awesome. I, I can't pr- praise praise it enough. It, it, I love the yeah. gameplay. I love the world. I love the story easily one of the best games i've played on playstation 4 yeah it's just a shame we've both played it already because now it's you know a free game but for those who haven't played it it is one you definitely have to check out so that's what i'm that's what i'm doing uh what do you got what do you got going on super bowl sunday man there you go get ready get get your get your wings ready get your food ready get your beer ready i love super bowl sunday it is one of my favorite days of the year so you bet your ass. I'm going to just relax and I'm going to watch every minute of the game. So make sure you, you do that as well. There you go. Football and food. No better way to spend the Sunday evening, right? Yep. Uh, but we are over our hour mark. It is time to wrap this episode up. Thank you guys for listening to another episode of the Crispy Compact Communique. If you like what you heard, make sure you go to our website, thecrispynoodle.com. Make sure you follow us on all the social media platforms, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, the whole shebang bang That's right. You can also find the Crispy Noodle Podcast on YouTube where you get the video version of this podcast or a whole bunch of our other videos. Go check out that uh, golf wartime rules video yeah. on YouTube. Absolutely. It's one of, one of my favorite segments. Um, but you can also find the audio version of this podcast on iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, Google Podcast, and Amazon devices. 
So make sure you search for, download, and subscribe to the Crispy Noodle Podcast on YouTube or the podcast service of your choice. That's right. We also we also have a SoundCloud page where you have mini noodles promos of the show. Go check them out as well. That's right. So many ways to get in touch with and share the Crispy Noodle Podcast. If you want to get in touch with us individually. Uh, you can send us your sports entertainment or odd news stories for us to take under consideration. You can find us on Twitter. I'm at Mikey Costanzo, M-I-K-E-Y-C-O-S-T-A-N-Z-O. And I am at Rich Liebig, R-I-C-H-L-I-E-B-I-G. Find us on the Twitters and let us know what's happening. Let us know how you're celebrating Super Bowl. Let us know if you play Control because, yeah, it's one of our oh. top games that we recommend. So let us know what's happening and we'll give you a Crispy Noodle shout out. Uh, but for right now, we got to wrap this up. This has been the Crispy Noodle. Let us be the Crispy Noodle in your vegetarian salad of life and boring news. You got anything else, Mike? No, that's it. Everybody enjoy your Super Bowl weekend. That's right. Enjoy Super Bowl Sunday, and we'll see you next week for analysis and recap of the, 20, of the 2020 NFL season. Uh, but for now, that'll do it. We'll see you guys next week. See you guys later. Bye-bye, all you fine people.